Uh, last week, no. What's going on with Miss Pac-Man? Is there something going on with Miss Pac-Man, or is that just a generalized question? I mean, I can. I. Where has I, she been? I, I've only played Miss Pac. Yeah, where is Miss Pac-Man? I've only played Miss Pac. Last time I played Miss Pac-Man was when I was like eleven year old, eleven, eleven, eleven years old well, at a. Correct me if I'm wrong. Zone. She's she's not even a scan like a skin for Pac-Man in Smash, is she? No, let's see. Uh, Apparently, oh, okay. uh, the rights with Miss Pac-Man is so weird and has gotten weirder recently. Hmm. I'm just going to look this hmm. up. I'm going to look this up while I'm waiting for Justin to... Uh, this is pro- quality pre-show entertainment. Let's see. Uh, September 20... This article's from September 27th. From Ars Technica, the rights to Miss Pac-Man are caught up in a messy legal battle. Mm-hmm. Let's see, I'm uh, just reading like the header stuff. Kyle Orland wrote this at games allegedly oh. misrepresented itself in negotiations with original developers. It's- uh, to last geek is saying in chat, basically, this Pac-Man was made without the permission of Pac-Man makers. Yeah, that much I knew. That much. My dad used to run uh, a, a chain of electronic stores in New York, and he used to, for some reason, be obsessed with the like the legal battles of Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man. Which is so, a shame. Miss Pac-Man's better. Yeah, it's a significantly better game. Uh Hey, when I get a uh, an email notification during the podcast, because I'm just like, well, what what, what email do I have? All right, when Justin get, gets back, we will... Uh, uh, no, act- I don't know about your emails, but welcome to the Catch All Podcast, the water cooler for Costly Calibrator, where we talk about our gaming experiences, and sometimes news. Maybe you want to ex- actually say experiences, right? Uh, I feel like that's just one of those words that's always going to escape you. God, I just said, I didn't even say escape right. What? Ro- Road. 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 Uh, so yeah, the Colossus uh, of Roads. <laughs> I broke Justin right at the beginning of the show. I love it. I like it. Yep. Continue, sir. Uh, we're going to jump right into what game you play. Um, did, did you actually intro like us as people? No. Um, hi, I'm your host, Justin. Uh, how do you do? And also have my co-host, <laughs> Josh, here. <laughs> how do you do? <laughs> we're, we're in a mood, people. Um, I just finished the job interview, and again, Justin was eating a pot pie. Uh, because he got distracted. Uh, and yeah, and, and Last Geek, this is actually the podcast. For those who may have missed the pre-show, I don't know <laughs> if this will make it into the proper edit. We were discussing the rights to Miss Pac-Man uh, while we were waiting for Justin to finish his food for the live show. I think it should. But though, I mean, what would, you know, entice people come to the live show? If they don't get that sweet, sweet. And nobody comes to it anyway. No, so, so, no, yeah, no. There. I'll find people here. Well, Last uh, Geek's here, but. Last Geek's, you know, we have people. People come in. Uh, okay. No, I don't think it's enough to bring people quicker. <laughs> no, not necessarily. Not, but here's the thing. That's what I bet last week. Here, I put it into the edit, and with a little thing that says, "Here's the special peek of what you could have seen if you watched the live show." Come back next week, and you won't see this. No. Uh, <laughs> All right, Josh. Talk, you know what? Let's talk. What I you say, play? You know what game I play? Uh, I want to know what so game you gonna, play. Uh, this is gonna be like a catch up for the past two weeks, which we had to skip last week's show because. My internet service provider dropped the ball or shit the bed. Whatever you want to say they did. They dropped Actually, the shit in not, the bed. Might not have been their fault, but I think it is. Anyways. Uh, so, yeah. I rolled credits in Borderlands 3 and haven't touched it since. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a Borderlands game to me, honestly. <laughs> There's a reason why I haven't touched it since. All right, we'll get into that later. But, yeah. Uh, the kind of, uh, a couple of things with Borderlands 3. Um, one, uh, for like I do applaud it for its... Uh, accessibility with co-op. Okay. Sorry, uh, accessibility might not be the right word, but kind of is, kind of isn't. Uh, that like you could just jump in at any time, and the person playing with you can, you know, stand fight. Like they're not going to be hiding in the corner while you destroy everything. Like everything like levels to them, everything levels to you. Like uh, if you're fighting a level thirty thing, you're fighting a level thirty thing. If they're level five, you're fighting a level five thing, or taking out level five damage and dealing level five damage. Uh, there is an actual option to switch it to classic Borderlands mode, where it will get the person uh, more experience, but it does not level to them. Okay, uh, so it's kind of cool to do that. Here's the thing I screwed up with Borderlands. So the equipment upgrades, like to your equipment slots, uh, weapon slots, uh. Shield and well, locks early. That part doesn't matter. Uh, but like their relic and all that stuff, like it's not level based. It's unlocked from specific missions. You have to play through those specific missions to get it unlocked. And that part, that's just weird. Okay, that's a lot. But 
Yeah, uh, other than that, uh, I do have to say a caution to PC players. Uh, I have a friend that came back from a trip, uh, kind of wanted to catch up everybody, downloaded a save file, loaded it, but seems that character was kind of hacked. <laughs> like, I see, like, he has every ability point, which is impossible. Interesting. And not only that, he played with one of my other friends who plays the same character, and it screwed up his character, too. Like, it, he's still locked in whatever weird thing it is. So, fit wow. who you play with, people. Fit who you play with. Uh, no idea if that's been fixed or not. No idea if uh, they're going to do anything about it or if they could do anything about it. But yeah, that's just a word of warning. Uh, I was going to talk about some voice actor craziness, but nah, everybody hear about that already. Uh, yeah, we've heard enough about that. Next thing I tried, and you know, it just lives up to his name so well. The Medieval Short-Lived Demo. Okay, yeah, let's let's hear about the Short-Lived Demo for Medieval. I played it for about two minutes. Uh, it's not... If you're a medieval fan, you're going to like it. Okay. Like, who's a medieval fan? I mean, some people are, but it like it's still... That's... Okay, so remind me, Did... medieval is like this skeleton guy with like the chunky like skull head, right? Yeah, with the one eye. Yeah, like that was a game that I very badly wanted to play when like I was a kid. And I forget why I just never did. I, maybe it was listed as an older game. I don't remember the logistics of why, but I just never did. And then I for, and then I was like, I literally was that kid who was like, my life is ruined because I didn't get to play this game that literally nobody in school had ever heard of. And then I'd forgotten about, you know, <laughs> not thought about again for years. Yeah, it's not, just, not saying it's, anything negative against the game. I'm just saying, like, I was very surprised it, when I saw this on the dock that this was actually a thing that like a recent thing. Yeah, I, I mean, it looks great. The short-lived demo, it, they call it that because, that, like, that's the actual name of it. Because uh, it is going to be there for a limited time. If you play it, you get a special item in game or helmet. Um, but, yeah, it still plays like an older game. Um, like, you can tell <laughs> that this wasn't made in this generation or the one before it or the one before that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's, that's kind of my issue with it. Uh, it's a great... For people who haven't played it or did play it and kind of miss it, they're probably gonna find some enjoyment in it. But I just, I was playing it. And I was like, eh, just other things I could play. So I'm like, I just turned them off, and that is it. <laughs> so Josh, I'm about to like just throw some straight up hot diarrhea out here. Do you want to get in before that? <laughs> no, I'm scared now, Justin. I don't even know what to do with that. <laughs> Too late. No. Marvel Ultimate Alliance Three got its updates. <laughs> You can wipe up afterwards. Uh, what the fuck? So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, I want to talk about this a lot last week, and I played a lot more last week, not as much this week, but uh, they got their Curse of the Vampire update. Uh, yeah. Now, there is a hey, at least free... hey, At least you're bringing it up, and it's not just for the 18th week in a row Justin happens to play this game. It's actually there was a DLC and information and new stuff to potentially talk about. No, that's going to be Gundam now. We'll get to that later. God um, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, there are, uh, so there's free stuff with this and there's paid stuff with this. Okay. Uh, right off the bat, it's weird because to get to the new stuff, you have to go into a different, like there's the main menu, there's the, they call expansion. When you hit that, it flips you over to the Curse of the Vampire. And okay. you can only access this, this stuff back at four. The weirdest part is the Shield Depot, which I'll get into, is only on Curse of the Vampire. It's not on the other one, but it's something that unlocks stuff for everything. Uh, I don't know. It's weird. So, um... Okay, I that just seems, uh, yeah, that seems like a weird, just, like, uh, interface choice. It as far as I know, the only stuff you get with paid, I could be completely wrong on this, it's just, well, the characters... Uh, which you have to unlock, but they don't make it hard to unlock it. Um, they also give you endurance and gauntlet mode, which is how you unlock them. <coughs> um, it's, it's basically like endurance and gauntlet mode. Like it basically, uh, you do one challenge, then you do another challenge, and then another challenge. And it is a gauntlet. You go through it. Uh, gauntlet does have an ending. Endurance will just keep throwing on a new challenge, and then a new challenge, and then a new challenge until you uh, get defeated. Sure. Uh, but they make it very easy to unlock all the four characters at the beginning. Like it's very low level. Just jump right in, get it, knock them out. Um, that's all that's actually in the paid part. Uh, the free expansion, uh, at least I think so from all this, is... Uh, well, first thing I, I threw a critique is something I they need to fix. Is the uh, ISO 8 management still horrible? 
I mean, it was one of the single worst interfaces I've ever had to deal with in just the base game. It is a chore to manage them. And of course, they're like, I, I'm one of those people who's like, I'll just let it go. But you only have a thousand slots, which sounds like a lot, but it, it starts to fill up. And there's the way also you ones. Earn, the way you earn it, it earns rapidly. Very rapidly. And then, like, some you can't delete, some you can't modify, which you might as well just delete those. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> it's it's a weird thing. I wish they would do that, but whatever. Um, Nightmare mode is kind of like a new take on story mode. But you can actually get shield credits from this, which goes into shield depot. We'll get to that in a bit. Um, Nightmare mode is basically the story. I think it starts out for the level 40. Okay. Uh, but they throw in special modi- vampiric modifiers to so many uh, enemies and bosses and stuff like that, which just makes it more challenging. So whatever. It's cool. Another reason to play through it. When you say vampiric modifiers, like they just randomly like absorb your health, or is it just it some just ran- absorb your health? Some of their strength will get there. Some of them get defenses. Hmm. Okay. They just throw vampiric on it. It doesn't make sense. Other than it goes with the theme, uh, as one does. Now this is for the free one. They just say a taste of Gauntlet. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> so if you want to know, you have this game. Download it. You tell me. Because I'm not doing that research. Uh, next is the Shield Depot. <laughs> so the Shield Depot is kind of like their new storefront. They're introducing a new currency. <laughs> sure. Uh, which is the Shield Credits. But with the Shield Credits, there's actually, uh, right off the bat, they did, uh, I like saying that, uh, four more new suits. Okay. Like actual, sorry, they call them outfits. But actual, like, different outfits, these aren't palace swaps. The outfits they have, uh, it says, like, it advertised for seven heroes, but I think they're counting what they released already, being the Simonic Spider-Man suit, Captain Marvel's, uh, old school Miss Marvel suit, and, uh, Planet Hulk. Uh, so the new ones is like Captain America, which looks like a I forget what version of Cap it is. Is where he he's not wearing a helmet. He got like the hologram shield. Mm. That I don't, one. Mem- I don't uh, remember the term, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, uh, Extremis. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying it right. Iron Man. Uh, like an armor up Black Panther. Yeah, uh, armor up Black Panther and a Ultimate Thor. So those are new ones in the thing, which you can buy through your hero points, but you can also buy them new voice lines uh, and other stuff. Really doesn't matter. Just more little things to earn um but also with the shield depot you finally have a use for credits uh <laughs> dun, like, dun, dun. i was saving up millions and millions and i don't have like over a thousand at the moment because you can now buy the uh mid-tier xp cubes okay so yeah that's nice uh other than that um they added like other hexagons to the big hexagon hero upgrade whatever alliance system uh, one of them, very nice, uh, being, hey, you don't suck as much power from people who fly, which I don't know why just flight takes energy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was weird always that that was the one that took energy and nothing else really. Yeah, teleport doesn't take energy. Nope. Uh, I mean, Moon Knight, he, tip- he glides, his doesn't take energy, thankfully. Mm. Uh, but yeah, other than that, level cap up to 150. Uh, this update, I have no idea what it means. Adjustments to behavior during co-op. So I don't know if you just got different options to say. I doubt their voice, but whatever. Hmm. Uh, and also, you cannot play in multiplayer rooms. You're using an earlier version. But, meh. And that's about it. Uh, the new characters are awesome. Uh, I enjoy playing all of them, being Boon Knight, Punisher, Morbius, and Blade. Uh, they, like, they're not like reskins of other characters. They that was what was being my question. I was like wondering if they were actually reskins or they actually felt like pure new characters. They feel like pure new characters. Well, as much as a pure new character as you can in, in an Ultimate Alliance game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You uh, know what I mean. So yeah, I'm enjoying it. Uh, it gives me more reason to play it. I won't go on any longer than that. Gosh. I, I mean, yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> Unless you have a question. Feel free to ask your questions. <laughs> no, I think that covers just about everything. I mean, I... Sh- Part of me wants to play this more, and the other part of me is like, I really, I, I don't. <laughs> I'll play it with you. Yeah, I know you will. That <laughs> that doesn't didn't really necessarily entice me. Oh, I, man, there's I other stuff I'd rather. That wants to sh- <laughs> that's stuff I'd rather. Other stuff I'd much rather play with you than just have you smash your Hulk well- into me. That does sound like a fun time. But uh, what well, Marvel Ultimate Alliance came to me. <laughs> Like, uh, Greg said this one thing. We're both broken people for this. He's like, how about these awesome games? There's not a title of Goose game. Zelda. 
Sidonar Warhearts. And I think I'll just grind the same room over and over more of Ultimate Alliance. <laughs> and that's how I feel every time I look at my screen. But to be fair, like, uh, I mostly get my Switch play in time at work. I have like an hour lunch. It takes like less than 10 minutes to eat. So I play 50 minutes. Just, I want something mindless. Something I don't care if I'm hearing or something like getting a full experience. That's what Marvel Ultimate Alliance for me is that game just to distract me for a bit. Hmm. And it's also one of those games like if uh, you want to grind stuff, like just throw a good podcast on or something like that, still play it and be fine. Uh, so no, it's definitely good for that purpose. I will agree. During podcast editing, it was always enjoyable to play. It's one of the definitely one of the better podcast editing uh, games I've dealt with in the last year. Like we, I think honestly for our game of the year award show, I don't know what if we're gonna do a game of the year award show this year, but if whatever one we do, I might actually add the uh, best productivity game <laughs> as an option because then that would win my uh, my my award for that probably. I guess. Josh, Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> what game you play? Name one. I- one yeah, cause it's literally been one uh no i, I mean, actually have to, I, I played actually a couple of things but they're under embargo so i can't talk about them um All right, going on. no but so one thing i have played uh that came out last week i wanted to talk about it last week uh neo cab so you may remember me talking about neo cab on other constant calibrating stuff circa last year e3 i want to say um and essentially the game is a uh uh, you you are a cab driver uh, who you're invited to this big city, and it's a city where um, this major tech company is essentially corrupting the government and making it that uh, uh, actual drivers, the neo cab company, are, are going to become illegal, essentially. And this company is uh, making it that, like their tech, their drive, their driverless cars are the future. And you're invited to move there by your best friend, who you have been estranged from for some time. Uh, and yeah, the way the game unfolds is over a few different nights. You're out every night. Essentially, you're an Uber driver for all intents and purposes. And the way the game works is, yeah, you are just uh, having conversations in your car. But the cool hook about the game, which was really light uh, when I played it at E3 uh, at the mix last year, but it's way more expanded than the full game, is you have different moods. You're given this uh, this bracelet that shows different colors. Um, uh, red for anger, blue for sadness, um, green for, like, contentment, and uh, yellow for, like, excitement. And this, you can actually, like, uh, check your mood, like, the actual full spectrum of it, because it's not just four choices, it's hundreds it's like a hundred choices all around this massive spread uh closer mm-hmm. into the middle is more of like a reduced version of your emotion while out spread out to the edge is a, you're feeling emotion more intensely and you might so you might think you know oh of course i always want to be excited and happy but the thing is if you're too excited and happy then that comes across fake you know um there's mixed so emotion. Go ahead. Does it totally depend on who you pick up, like what mood you're in, if it affects them or not? It affects conversations you have with people in your car. Your mood is constantly changing based on your your options of things you say. Um, so, like, if you're in a happy mood, but you choose a piece of dialogue that is, like, self-effacing, like, sad, it will push you towards that. But if a hmm. customer in your car is a dick to you, it'll push you towards anger. Um so sometimes it's unpredictable how your mood's going to shift. Sometimes, you know, you can read a dialogue option and be like, okay, this is going to shift it. What's cool about it is you might think, okay, that's kind of like a cool little thing, uh, but how does it affect gameplay? So you'll have conversations with people, and let's say someone uh, – oh, someone excitement before, how, uh, being purely excited is not always a good thing. Let's say you're super excited and someone confides in you about how they're having a really tough time and they don't know what to do about something. Your options could be – you know, your, tech, your dialogue options could be, hey – Let's talk about this. Don't worry about it. Or here, let me tell you about how what's something that happened to me. And you might think to yourself, well, I want to choose the more – I don't want to choose the all about me thing. I want to choose the here, let me talk to you. You click on it and it's like you're actually too excited to click this mm-hmm. option. So mm. it, it'll, it'll actually uh, yellow out, blue out, red out, or green out options based on if your mood is too far in one direction. Uh, which can change – so you change your ability to have certain conversational things. I feel okay. like this game is almost like min-maxing emotional states <laughs> <laughs> in, in a weird sort of way. Um, it's my life, man. <laughs> uh, 
Mine too, but it, it's 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 an interesting. It's not by any means a perfect take on mental illness and like mental states or anything like that. But it's it's one of the better attempts. Like 2019 has been really big on mental health and stuff like that in video games and stuff like and and and, and things of that nature. Like late 2018 through 2019, it's been a big thing, and a lot of games and a lot of movies and a lot of TV shows keep getting it wrong. This is, in my opinion, at least, and this is I'm not by any means a mental health professional by any stretch of imagination, but just as a person who suffers mental health stuff, I feel this is a re- a pretty reasonable, well-put-together uh, attempt at exploring that because there are those moments where, in, even in real life, where I'm like, I know I need to say this thing to a person, but my emotional state literally forbids me from doing that because mm-hmm. I'm too angry at them, I'm too sad about myself, something, 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 and just the wrong words come out or something. So, yeah, um... Without giving too much away, the way the story uh, progresses uh, is at some point, uh, your best friend Savvy, who you don't get even get a chance to move in with, she pretty much goes missing on night one. Uh, and a large portion of the game is finding out what happened to her, and there's a lot of twists and turns. And straight up, I could not give a shit about the main story of this game. <laughs> um, I never felt much of an attachment to... Um, to, to the character you know, you're trying to find. I never felt much of a tr- attempt. Uh, I, I, I enjoyed the story well enough that was mm-hmm. being told uh, from my character's perspective. But I yeah, I was never particularly attached to her. And then like the resolution of it, I honestly just, it did nothing for me. I didn't really get much of enjoyment out of it. What I did enjoy and why this is probably one of my favorite indie, I, 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 definitely I think in the top five indie games for me so far this year and okay. one of my top 10 for the year uh, games is the customers you pick up. There's all different sorts of customers that have all these different extremely well written narratives. Cause he, so you could pick up a customer, um, and then you can come across them on other nights. You get to choose which fares you pick up. Some fares you can only pick up if you have a perfect five star rating. Cause that's the thing. Mm-hmm. You're not just, uh, min maxing essentially your, your emotional state. Uh, you're also trying to, uh, get five star ratings and stuff. Cause if your rating gets too low for too long, I, I don't, I didn't have this happen to me, but you, you lose your Neo cab license. I imagine the game ends. I, I have, haven't tested it out yet. Um, I mm-hmm. dropped down to like one star, like a couple of times, but then I would get it back up in time before, before the end of the night. So it was never really an issue. Gotcha. Um, cause there's just some fares. They will give you one star. For, literally you do nothing wrong. There's one particular person who the moment they get in your car, they puke everywhere. And they're oh, so drunk life. that okay. yeah, and they're so drunk that they accuse you of throwing up in your own car. Um, I'm you know, pull that one off one day. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so this this you know stuff like that. Um, so you're trying to make money because you need a place to sleep at night. You're trying, and you're also trying, which the money was never an issue. Me, I never ran out at any mm-hmm. point. Um, and there again, my rating was never an issue, much of an issue. Um. But yeah, you so you're choosing your fares at all the times, and you could pick up the same people over and over again, which will actually like expand on their story. So there's like uh, two different people I picked up like three or I think like three times each, and then there's one person who I picked up, and then I saw them on the map, and I never picked them up again. So mm-hmm. this game definitely warrants the further playthroughs because just I I just you know there are people I never picked up uh, mm-hmm. for one reason or another. So I, I it's it's a really cool take on like the visual novel narrative style of things. And I think it opens up a lot of uh, versatility to it, but overall loved it. Uh, you know, there were characters like Una St. Clair. Uh, I think I'm saying it right. Agonon and, uh, uh, shit, uh, Gideon to call there like these three different characters that I just keep thinking about. I haven't played the game now in almost a week and I keep coming back to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, my issues with the game, uh, I was, so I was playing on uh, switch. My main issue is some stuff just took for fucking ever to load. Uh, there would just be times when I was just sitting there, like, and uh, I, and it was mostly in handheld mode, and I would just get kind of bored waiting. Other things, uh, dialogue, it lets you set the speed that dialogue stays on screen and how fast mm-hmm. it, like, unfurls. The thing is, it sometimes doesn't matter. I had it on the, sl- I'd have put it on the slowest setting in the end. Because it was the only way to keep the the dialogue windows would just sometimes just disappear. Uh, hmm. It would like click through without me having to click or anything like that. Because it auto, it's always auto going. But it would sometimes just click through the next thing before I had time to read it. And I'm a quick reader. Like things with like, I don't know, three, four lines of dialogue. 
would just be up and down, like maybe maybe half a second. And I'm not sure if that's a glitch or something happened in the game. But in a narrative based game, that's extremely frustrating to not be able to read everything. I just had a thought. Sure. It has nothing to do with this, kind of. Are people like advertising? I'm going to teach you how to read quickly. I'm like, whatever, we're kids. I imagine for you two, you see those commercials. Like, sure. let me teach you just secret reading technique where you like trim the page or something like that. <laughs> Why is that not a thing anymore? Like, I thought was you said, like, I remember seeing it. I was like, I want to take that class. I'm I, a slow reader. Because <laughs> I think that it was turned into be a bullshit technique. I don't think it is a uh, bullshit technique. Uh, well, I'm not a slow reader. I just don't comprehend what I read. <laughs> Just difference. Well, that's the thing. Um, I remember in my computer class, we would play these games. They were all about testing how fast you could read. And I would, these were my favorite games growing up, were these ones yeah. where I was absolutely obsessed with. And I would compete against other kids. And I was the fastest reader in all of seventh grade at uh, Ripple One Middle School. Thank you very much. Uh, Forget about it. <laughs> but I was very proud of it. I could not tell you if I retained anything, but I could read faster than anyone. Um. Nice. And yeah, it was an absolutely useless fucking skill. Uh, whatsoever. <laughs> I think there's, I think there are definitely things that uh, teach you to read with better, co- like essentially not read faster, but com- comprehend faster. I just don't know where that. I don't, I don't see adver- but I don't see anything advertised in the same way as as I did when we were kids. Yeah. Granted, Get- we don't watch TV anymore. Okay, go it. on. Sorry. Getting back to it, just my so my final thoughts on NeoCab is, um. I have a history of being very excited about games and be anticipating games and then being disappointed. And I'm not disappointed in this game. I may not have liked the main story all that much. I may not mm-hmm. have been attached to it. And I may not have uh, been fond of a couple of the bugs and quirks of it. But overall, it was a fun game. And it's one I am very excited to uh, check out again to see uh, like other, op- uh, other directions the story can go talk to different people. And just see how I could change it up. Uh, see if there actually is a fail state You know, for getting my rating too low. All those kind of fun things so okay. uh definitely a fan gotcha well uh i play a little more gears 5 gears 5 so okay grinding my way through the insane campaign because i'm a masochist or something apparently sure. um it? yeah i'm getting to the point now because well, i'm supposed to i may or may not be on a podcast later i don't know i haven't heard enough from it so i was trying to get through the story <laughs> of like I really should just turn the difficulty down and just plow through this thing, which I probably think I'm going to do after the next... I'm trying to get to myself to a clean point that I could be like, okay, I could just start right back here and pick it on up. But I'm in one of the open levels, like, and I don't know what the clean point really is. So, yeah, that's happening. But also, I started getting into some multiplayer with some friends. It's good times. It is good, frustrating on ranked times. Hmm. Um. Yeah, we were playing just arcade matches, doing really well. I played a game better than I think. Uh, and then we started like, let's try rank, and we didn't. We we're all holding off on rank forever because we wanted a full crew. Didn't get it. We got three. Decided to jump in it anyways. Immediately, those matches got more intense. Like it, just noticeable people are not rushing in anymore. Holding back, holding the line. Maybe one person tries to flank. Oh man, it just it turns to the whole. Gameplay and something completely different. It gets whew, so much more zoned in. And then we did a ranking once. I got silver two. Not great. It's like, it's like the meh, you're there, which I also hear silver two is like the hardest to get out of. And I think it goes that gold, there's bronze below it. Uh, Onyx, maybe. And then mastered. Uh, I got a friend that is an Onyx. Then we got a, I think Sean Pitts actually have him on my list. He's master class. I'm like, oh, you really are good at this game. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know. It's night. Di- there's a dime. I don't see. I think all the wikis we're reading are wrong. It's, it's called wikis. Instead of wikis, wikis, wikis. That was on purpose. Slip of the tongue, but I like it. I mean, whatever you're weaken about. Yeah. It's honestly, I don't know what the tier list are. So I like find two different sites to say two different things, and then what I actually see in games way different. So eh. anyway, so it's Gears Five. Next is the game I need to tell you all about. You're probably not going to like, but I do. Uh, so if you got a PlayStation 4, do yourself a favor and me, because I need people to play with. Go to the store. Look for Gundam. Sorry, Mobile Suit Gundam Battle Operations 2, or just Battle Operations, or just Gundam. It'll pop up. It's free to play. Download it. Free now, to play, free to play. Say. Free to play, I say. 
I feel like she there's a, a hitch sh- for some reason. Mm, there's always a hitch. Uh, so the first one like really didn't have any microtransactions. You could only really access through the Japanese PSN. This is the first time they brought battle operations over to the States. Okay. As far as I know. And with it, they decide to embrace that free to playness. With that, it brought a lot of enhances, uh, enhancements and stuff. Like, uh, the first one, like, you only had, like, certain mobile suits. Josh, how you re- did you watch anything Gundam know what Gundam is? Okay, fantastic. Um, I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it. Give me a second here. No, to my knowledge, I have not. How much Toonami did you watch? None, ever. God. Okay, so... <laughs> Mobile suits are big, like, mechs you can hop into. I know what a mobile suit is. I know what Gundams are. I just have never watched What's it. the difference, Josh? No. <laughs> I know what these giant fucking battle robots are and <laughs> shit. Yeah, one turns Super Saiyan, Josh. No. Uh, <laughs> no, I was never into Toonami. I was never into anything like that. Remember, I, I hated anything that was anime or anime adjacent up until, like, last Tuesday. What hooked you? <laughs> It was, it was like the last couple of years. Still, what hooked you? I forgot what hooked you. Uh, what eventually got me into anime? Uh, it was a few years ago. Chernel had me watch uh, Oran High School Host Club. Okay. And uh, a romance dating thing uh, just did it for me. And that was very interesting to me. And yeah, no, cool. now I check out a bunch of different stuff now. I don't really watch much. Uh, I think I've only watched like one or two anime things like under my own volition. Uh, but pretty much if she tells me to watch something, I watch it with her. You need to get on My Hero Academia and, uh... I've seen it all. Demon Slayer. Okay, so, see? There you go. There you go. I've Great seen anime. all My Hero. Uh, I like that more than... I, I typically like that more than Sharno. Um, and then, uh, Sword Art. We were watching them until the most recent season with... Um... Why are we talking about anime? <laughs> Because Gundam is here. Uh, so, yeah, with this, like, you actually, there are more mobile suits. There are different level mobile suits. And that's where the microtransactions comes in because the game does have currency. You know, every single currency in the game you can earn within game. Okay. And I actually feel like, uh, I felt like it at first that they're like, oh, man, they're really pushing me to get it. But basically, like, or right now, actually, if you log in, they give you a bunch of mobile suits, good ones. Uh, you pretty much hold your own at any level. Um and uh, there's also like a very generous, as far as a free to play starter pack goes, I think it's like eight ninety nine. Uh, they give you sixty credits, kind of let's okay. So with the credits too, they let you get item drops or just loot boxes or surprise mechanics, whatever you want to call it. And surprise, yeah. Uh, so basically, like uh, three three credits lets you get one crate. Uh, Thirty credits lets you roll ten. Okay. Unless there's a special, then it's like less than that. So basically, like, uh, you can get weapons, you get a bunch of mobile suits, and they're actually very generous about getting you new mobile suits. Like, every single one I do, I get like, every 10 slot I do, I get like two new, new suits, which is awesome. If you get okay. the same thing, then you get uh, something called Recycle, which is a different currency. So anytime you get like double up stuff, you get Recycle currency, you can spend on other suits, weapons, and stuff like that. Uh, you earn currency through just playing the game. And at first, it's not great with what your reward is, but... Uh, they have just regular arcade matches, uh, and then they got something called uh, rated matches. Uh, okay. You actually have like a rating between, uh, let's see, there's a land battles and there's space battles. So different suits can only go on certain ones. Few can go on like both. And you get a rating per, and as you level up, like that rating goes from like negative D to a D to a D plus and so on. And the higher uh, rating you get, the more you get paid. And it also goes with your ranking too. You do get like a military type rank. And that's like your basic level, like it would be in any shooter. And the more rank you get, the better parts you can buy, and more rewards you get as well. So I'm just uh, laughing over negative D right now. <laughs> negative D. I, I am went, a child. Yeah, just said, man, dude. I was like, I was playing the stream. It was like, I need to be double D. Like, have my both uh, D in my space in my uh, land combat. And I did get my double D, sir. I have double Ds. Uh, so. <laughs> This has been a fucking show. Yes, it has. But it's great. Uh, uh, so it sounds cool. I mean, uh, everything about like well, everything on paper about these kind of games sounds like something I would like. It's just I don't. I'll put it this way: I, for the gun of games in particular, I like the ones that it makes you feel more like the man and machine, and not just the machine. Yeah, if that makes any sense. No, that uh, makes these- total sense. One of the things I've always hated about games where I'm like, hey, I'm playing as Joe Everyman, and I guess we'll never see him again because now I'm a robot. Pretty much. Uh, but that's the cool thing about this, too. Like, it's 
there's points you have to capture across the map uh, on certain play modes. Uh, and to do that, you actually have to get out of your suit to do it. And uh, so it poses a risk there. Also, like, you get call in uh, artillery strikes, but you also have to get out the suit to do that, too. Only at those uh, certain checkpoints. And also, like, sometimes you can play on a bomb, depending on what game mode you play. You also got to be out suit out of that. And that's also how you repair is getting out your suit. Hmm. Which I, I wish they'd jack up the repair rate, but whatever. Uh, and there's also, like, when you, like, uh, knock down a suit, you get points for, like, killing the suit. And if the pilot's in it, you get points for that, too. But you can also, like, bail out if you're like it looks like things are dire and hopefully maybe escape pull a little plan with like that like some people like to bail out try to capture a point or bail out and try to plant a bomb on the enemy's base even if they're playing that game mode so I don't know, a lot of cool tactics it's fun like the machines feel weighty super okay weighty. that's good uh because like there's a ton of different gundam games where they're just super fast like there's even a dynasty warriors gundam game <laughs> um which i enjoyed uh but <laughs> Yeah, of course I enjoyed it. But yeah, this, like, all the suits feel weighty, everything, like, it, it's the Dark Souls of Gundam combat, kind of. Like, every hit you do, like, it has to hit, we reload, it takes time, um, when you swing, it's a big swing, so you gotta make sure you're gonna hit that thing, and you still have some charge up time before you can swing again. Um, when people swing at you, you can actually have one charge move, which also has to charge back up, but that would counter one. Uh, and like, it, the game is so damn deep in the combat. <laughs> like, I had a friend, he loaded up, was like, I did a tutorial, and nope, there was just things going on. Um, but with that too, like, uh, there is a rock paper system to all the suits, like, there's support suits, which are more heavy hitters, artillery. Uh, there's raid suits that are, like, very quick, digger ones that want to get up in your face, getting your beam sabers out, and then there's the general, which kind of, like, the balance between those. And then, like, uh, support beats out, or does more damage to general, general does more damage to raid, raid does more damage to support. Okay. So you kind of got to pick your battles in that, too. That said, a better pilot on support can beat out somebody that's not so great on raid. And even though, like, uh, some people can get an unfair advantage depending on their suits and stuff they pick, but if you pick the right thing or like if you get because I had one that was a support a raid came on there was a higher level it instantly destroyed me but I had the same thing when I went against a general uh, that I just destroyed too uh, like you you can hold your own some parts it feels cheap but I don't know it they do it better than most that try to incorporate gear within like a free to play game because you don't want to uh, and yeah, it, at some point you could be like, oh, you know, pay the win, but not really, because the only thing you can pay for is the credits to unlock more loot boxes, which sometimes you get a weapon, sometimes you don't. You can't drop by, like, the store credit directly. So, I don't know. Okay. That's my Gundam rant. Oh, my I God. Mean, like, I have to do my dailies every day, man. I've been on it. Well, now I f understand why you uh, forgot to eat food before the podcast. Like, I, I, I was get my dailies out of the way, bro. I figured you would talk about this for like a minute or two. I was not expecting this uh, degree, and I wouldn't actually expect also that I would be interested, you know. So, uh, I, you know, I, I appreciate this. I appreciate this chat. I, I, I need, I don't know what they call them, wingmen? wingmen? I, need another, I need another person in my suit group. That's what we'll call it. Okay, uh, so for people who want to join my suit group, God, that's going to be my clan. Uh, yeah, just Super go ahead and download riot. it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm liking this. I'm liking it. But yeah, free to play. Download it. Enjoy it. Uh, the, the weird thing about this game is I haven't seen it advertised anywhere. Like Twitter, nothing. Uh, I, they might have put a post out. I know they made a launch trailer. But I honestly completely, I was excited when they announced this game a couple years back. Then I forgot hmm. about it. Uh, those on the up and up probably already jumped on the Japanese store. Go ahead and download because there's people that were already playing it. If you did that, you know, get your Japanese PSN account, download it, switch back, and then you can play it. Uh, but yeah, uh, I honestly forgot about it until I was just browsing the store for something else. And I saw it at the bottom corner. I was like, <gasps> ran, downloaded it, super excited to play it, did it. And yeah, here we are. <laughs> Sounds about right. We don't need to talk about the news. Let's talk more about Gundam. No, we I think we have we've got enough uh Gundam. Uh. All right. Next week. All right. So <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Is this what I have to look forward to every week on the catch on now? Till I get bored of it. <sighs> With you that could be literally like tomorrow or in 17 years. This is true. This is and, very true. And rarely anything I'm in, in between. <laughs> it's just like exclusive Gundam Marvel Ultimate Alliance podcast. 
I mean, that's how the Fire Emblem show came to be, which we really need to record the final episodes of. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, we do. Uh, so let's get into news. Uh, so this is the mix of stuff that's happened between two weeks. Let's get into it. Uh, so like, I wrote in here, the goose is loose. <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, just an opportunity for me to just be like, just, I think I was going to slam my fist on the desk and scream honk into the microphone. Uh, so I was very excited last week to see that Untitled Goose Game, a game that uh, I had not expected, I'd not expected, but let's just leave it at that, uh, became Don't a meme machine. goose. Yeah, but became this massive meme machine to the point that, like, Charnel sends me untitled goose memes now. Um, and on top of that, it last week became the number one bestseller on the uh, Nintendo Switch eShop, beating out Link's Awakening. Which is, that just blows my mind. That is, I realize it's a remaster, but it's a remaster of one of the you know, most popular games and a game that's extremely well rated in the, in the remaster. And it's a fucking Zelda game. And it beat it out. And that's just... Absolutely insane. Uh, I had the opportunity. I was on the Plus One Player podcast last week. Uh, like, I think like last Thursday, Thursday, and it just went out this week. And I went on a very long rant about Untitled Goose Game with uh, uh, the host over there. So uh, I'd recommend listening to that. <laughs> and to answer your question that you wrote into the chat, Canadian geese are not polite. Canadian geese are the single most... Have you never dealt with a Canadian goose, Justin? No, uh, are, not that I know of. I, I mean, I, geese, every geese I meet, or goose, whatever, is an asshole, so I just assume. So you mostly just dealt with the white geese, or have you dealt with, like, because king geese are the ones that are black heads and, like, kind of brownish no, uh, that's, wings. That's what we got here, I think, right? J- JP's listening area. Because that's pretty, yeah. we don't have the white geese here, we got pretty that's, much that. Yeah, the one that I'm describing, he, like, that's they, a Canadian. They will that, pick a fight with you. <laughs> that's a Canadian goose. Okay. That is speci- a white goose is just a goose. A uh, Canadian goose is the one with the black heads. Canadian geese are the the description I heard somebody say a couple weeks ago that has stuck with me is essentially the people of Canada uh, Canada the people of Canada are so polite, so loving, such wonderful people because the Canadian geese absorb all the hatred the people of Canada <laughs> can possibly it just put out. Fly it out the country. <laughs> And essentially just, yeah, they, they take it all out to keep the country, uh, sane. Yeah, no, um, I, I, when I was a kid, I got, when I was like four or five years old, I was at the, uh, Stanford Nature Center and three Canadian geese literally in a triangle surrounded me and were fucking just honking <laughs> at me and screaming at me before they charged me. And my mom, uh, had to literally punch a goose in the face to get it <laughs> off of me. I, I actually don't... sincerely have a very bad fear of geese. <laughs> so. Like I back up for them to the point where they back off, but I, I'm probably going to just straight stand up to one and be like, yo, charge me and then uh, punt I, it and see what happens. You, you no. Know, <laughs> <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Oh, Jesus. Uh Geese fucking suck. <laughs> but they the do. game like, is awesome. I will never hurt animals and purposely hurt a person. No. But geese, I'm fucking thinking about it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, no. If the goose is thinking about it, you, better be prepared to at least kick it just to get it away from you. Uh, just quick question: Did you play through Goose Untitled Goose Game? Yes or no? I got through the first part, the garden. Boom. Um, All right. Uh, you, it. I played through it in one sitting, uh, and I don't remember if we talked about it on the show, but it is a surprisingly beautiful experience. Yeah. Did you and, see? And I uh, cannot recommend the game enough. Kutaka article that somebody gathered every single item in a game and dropped it down a hole. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, they dropped it into the uh, into the canal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, that was my goal was to capture every single person and lock them in the garage before uh, I just just could discover that it wasn't possible. So I finally managed to lock three people in the garage, and I posted that yeah. like three weeks ago, and it took until like yesterday. Or two days ago was the last time was people finally stopped liking it on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, and we didn't even talk about the memes they're doing. Like, there's Last of Us stuff, where it's like Joel, Ellie, the goose with the knife. The, uh, putting the goose into other games is the best thing to come out of Untitled yeah, Goose I like game. the uh, Fire Emblem one that is drawn in the art style of the goose game, but the uh-huh. goose is just taking all their weapons and running Love away. Love it. That's all you do in this game. You, like, you just... You're a dick to everybody. You're just trying to screw with them, and... <laughs> It's great. But it's fantastic. There's a reason for it, though, and you do uncover it as the narrative unfolds. Is it like? Is it a reason? Like you know, uh, great stress reliever. Uh, JP's by the way. Sorry, Justin. Very super. 
When Metal Gear Solid Five came out, Kojima said, there is a reason why Quiet is dressed this way. <laughs> Isn't it one of those type of reasons? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All I'm going to say is, at the very end of the game, I legitimately cheered in my bed because I figured out what the whole game was about. And okay. it made me very fucking happy. And I, I cannot think of a game in 2019 that have made, has made me that happy. The game makes me happy regardless, so I can't wait till I get to that moment. No, uh, it's, but yeah. it's it's a lot of fun, and uh, I cannot <laughs> recommend finishing it up. It's seriously, I think I did it in one sitting, about just over three hours, and I took my time with some puzzles. Sorry, that reminds me of think I said Nathan earlier today, not the Goose Game Kojima. Uh, <laughs> where he's like wondering if he wants to spend $60 on Death Stranding, and I literally say, have you ever thrown $60 blindly at a conversation piece? I need to go follow it up. Just imagine, you have the Death Stranding case, sit that on a coffee table, wait for somebody who doesn't know, picks it up, say, what is this? Didn't have yeah. fun with it. See, there you go. Uh, so, next thing is, <laughs> uh, somebody snapped the game in the industry. Uh, they're just high-level people just kind of disappearing. Uh, yep. Uh, so first, uh, last week, if you haven't seen, Sean Layden, who was... I forget his title. <sighs> Give me a sec. But pretty okay. much anything you saw from Sony, he was on the stage presenting it. Uh, not to see. He was... Some director. He was uh, the chair... Let's see. He was the chairman of uh, the SIE Worldwide Studios. So not a director. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, he was yeah, the chairman. Uh, He's previously a president and CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment. He'd been there for 35 years. Let's just... Believe it at that. Years, geez. Uh, that, but yeah, uh, yeah, it was weird. Like, uh, there was nothing announced. There was nothing. Usually, like, a wayward tweet. A wayward tweet from Sony that seemed panicky. Mm hmm. Well, uh, he wasn't panicky. tagged. It seemed like a social media person. The way I described it to someone is it reminded me of a social media person who literally didn't even know what was going on. It was just told, write exactly this and exactly this. Yeah, it, just to get ahead of it before anything else happens. So this mm. isn't a, hey, this was planned. Good journey and stuff like that. Let me give you a nice send off. Like, kind of like what we saw from Reggie. Well, Reggie did a whole bunch of crap and a whole ton of videos and stuff like that. It was fantastic. Yep. Uh, but yeah, just one weird tweet from Sony. Not even a blog post. Just yep. on the PlayStation blog. Just a tweet. And nowhere else. Uh, so... <laughs> Yeah, people were kind of curious what's happening. We haven't heard anything from, him, as far as I know, up to now, too. Uh, a lot of speculations going on. More than likely, he is probably leaving to jump on a venture with another company. I think people are thinking Stadia. Who knows? Stadia is the fair guess. Uh, well, I was going to lean into then, uh, literally today, out of the blue, it was handled a little bit better, and he actually announced it himself, but... It was out of the blue. Mike Ybarra, the corporate vice president for Xbox, who's been with Microsoft for 20 years, mm -hmm. uh, who's been at Microsoft slash Xbox diehard for the longest time, very heavily associated with the company, also announced he's leaving Microsoft. And again, all the tweets response were like, what the fuck? Like out of the mm -hmm. blue. So the assumption, but most people are they're all leaving to, um, they're all leaving because they're all Stadia bound. Uh, but our, I'm trying to find it right now. Uh, our buddy uh, Rebecca Valentine posted earlier. I'm trying to. She, she posts tweets way too damn much uh, for me. Another oh, guy's Rebuka. Yeah, yeah, Rebuka <laughs> right now. So uh, she wrote really. So I uh, really want Layden and Yabara and some of the other these other folks to turn up in a few months, all doing something ridiculous like a blockchain knitting startup or kickstarting Frog Fractions Five. <laughs> and then in parentheses, <laughs> they're probably all going to Stadia though, right? Yeah, and I, that's the thing too. I would love it to be something we don't know about. It'd be even funnier for something just not in the gaming industry. But yeah. I mean, wine company. <laughs> it must be they're doing something to better themselves, doing something they want to pursue. So mm -hmm. assuming that, good hats off, enjoy. But who knows? Right now, we don't. <laughs> I mean, sometimes people just needed it, it, the the rumor with Layden was it was like a shake up at Sony and uh, shit was going awry. No, it's no such rumor with Yabara because it's more of a logical like way that it was yeah. handled uh his also, leaving but Clayton at this point kind of it does face and he didn't really enjoy that like i wasn't he's the one reason why like sony doesn't do 
or kind of toned down their appearances at E3, like not doing a stage show anymore and stuff like that. I definitely remember reading some stuff like that, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just a case of... It, it it doesn't seem like it's a restructuring or a clusterfuck as it was when, like last week when we would have been discussing this, but it seems like uh, some high-level people are leaving for some reason, presumably Stadia. Um, my thing is, I mean, I know Reggie Fizeme is retired, but God, I just want to see him, Yabara and Layden all end up at Stadia. And it's just like, well, this is the weirdest meeting of the minds, like, ever. <laughs> Game in industry, assemble! Just wanted it, to like, say literally, that, that, that kind of thing. I mean, we know we, we know there's uh, some stuff uh, afoot here and there. So we'll probably find out more in the next month or two if there are other things. Um, Speaking of, like, shit service stuff, did you see, like, Attack of the Dock? Like, they're actually posting that stuff that's actually happening. Do you know what that is? Yeah, Attack the Dock. It's the Attack of the Show documentary that uh, Chris Gore was working on for the longest time, and then it just disappeared into uh, the ether. Yeah, I know. I saw a bunch of people talking about it, and I for th- I cannot wait to watch that. I want to do a fucking viewing party for that, but the only Same. people <laughs> but the only people I know would be interested are you and people in the industry. Uh, I think I volunteered the other day to. Uh, 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 be a waiter at uh at, at Adam Sessler's viewing party just to get in on that. <laughs> to which he did like that tweet. <laughs> uh, yeah, he he's probably so giddy about that too. But yeah, like they actually uh, he does Twitter not account, seem happy about it at all. Actually, he doesn't. I thought no. he was like, oh jeez, I thought he was no, happy I mean, to like his Twitter is hard to read motion into. Gotcha. But yeah, uh, the Twitter account kind of came live, and they did kind of just showed that little eyes looking in the attack of the dock thing. Anyways, side note, that wasn't even on the dock. <laughs> I mean, that, uh, that's gaming adjacent. Gaming adjacent. Yeah. So this one, this one will be a quick one. Uh, Destiny Shadowkeep uh, dropped. Uh, if anybody's wondering what that means, is this is Destiny without Activision. This is just Bungie ran Destiny. Uh, this, like most people, oh God, people give him such a hard time. It was. <laughs> on dare not launch because like yeah uh they've done the launches before but they also have been under activision using littered stuff for so long and now they're kind of running everything on their own i'm really curious how this back end is running uh how they're maintaining it so yeah of course it's a rocky launch um but whatever uh from right here like game's phenomenal uh people are enjoying it a lot of changes that people wanted uh mm-hmm. the coolest thing i just want to mention is the cross progression now so uh, you have to log into Bungie. You have to link your accounts. And then when you link your accounts, it will pull like your if you did something on Xbox, PC, well, or I think they call it Blizzard Activision. Uh, pulls that up and then also pulls up your uh, PlayStation. Then you can pick which one you want to be your main linked accounts, and that's the one that the cross progression goes. And it is smooth. Like when you um, once you link, like it actually you actually link your Xbox and PlayStation accounts. So when you log in on PlayStation. There's no signing in. It just it it that it pulls your stuff. Uh, if you played primarily on PC, had every th- achievement unlocked, you'll just see uh, trophies pop 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 pop. pop Same pop, thing pop. we do on the Xbox too, and that's why pop pop pop. It pops. <laughs> it. Uh, so yeah, it's cool. Uh, so I, I've been thinking now's the time to get into Destiny, but I'm also thinking, is it? Uh, <laughs> I want to, but don't have the time. I want to as well, and I don't have the time, and I keep considering it, and I'm just like, no, no. Yeah, so speaking about not having time for stuff, uh, Red Dead PC was announced by Rockstar. Out of the fucking blue. That we all know was coming, but out of the blue, and when is it hitting? November? Yeah, the date, I just lost it. 5th. November 5th. Not only that, uh, it's coming to the, uh, you can buy it from Rockstar with their new launcher, which their launcher, I think, just announced, uh, released today. Um... If you uh, pre-order them, the game well hits November fifth. You also get a ton of pre-order items, and you can pick two Rockstar games between. I think it was like Bully, Grand Theft Auto Three, Vice stuff City, that most of us Andres. probably stuff that most of us probably already own on Steam and other platforms, mind you. But yeah. in case you don't, yeah, they, you get to choose two of like six different games. And then I think it's a free upgrade to the limited edition or the digital limited edition or something like that. Yeah, you could do that. Like I, the uh, that one is, uh, I think seventy nine ninety nine. You get more stuff for. Um, I thought it was. I thought it was just the pre oh, no, no. pre no, okay, pre ordering yeah. gives you an upgrade. Pre order is a uh, your standard edition. That's your standard price, fifty nine ninety nine. 
Uh, you get uh, bank robbery missions, gang hideouts, and story mode. I don't know. I guess you're talking about multiplayer. But I'm not 100 percent sure about that. Uh, okay. Uh, horse, double back thoroughbred, some outfits, gameplay bonuses, loot, stuff like that. Uh, there is an ultimate edition where you also get all that, which you can get for seventy nine ninety nine. Later, will be ninety nine ninety nine. Uh, you can get bonus outfits, uh, free survivor camp theme, rank bonuses. Black Chestnut Thoroughbred, and as I said, everything is in the special edition already. Uh, and plus D2 Rockstar Games, no matter which one you pre-order. So uh, I actually was not, like, I was going to haul off for Steam release, which the Steam release is going to be a month later. Because yep. the Grand Theft Auto launcher was horrible. Like, every oh, time yeah. I'm in the mood to play Grand Theft Auto Five, I hit the launcher and there's like a 10 to 20 gig update. I'm like, well, I guess I'm not. Uh, but because that's I look at- what happens to me with Mel as well. Every time I try to play Grand Theft Auto Five, because I was actually lo- I was doing every day. I was locking in after the casino update because I was enjoying the casino stuff and I liked getting my daily chips and do my daily spin of the wheel. I did that for two whole weeks, and I was like, it takes me longer to get into the game than I'm actually playing the game. Yeah, but now they actually made a legit game launcher for Rockstar. Yep. Uh, as far as I could tell, yep, yeah, it'll keep your stuff updated. I just launched Grand Theft Auto Five, making sure I didn't have an update, and already took care of it. Uh, so it takes care of it, as in like you know, you load up Steam and it starts downloading all your stuff. Yeah. Uh, one thing I don't see is a place to tell me where to I download my games. So I'm trying to figure that out. Cool thing it does do though, like if you have stuff on Steam, it will also pop up in this library. Like I have Max Payne and Bully Scholarship Edition. It's like, oh, hey, here's the link. Play on Steam. So it's a good place to just, it's a collection of your Rockstar stuff. Uh, better than I thought it'd be. Pretty cool. Uh, That's only awesome. Only thing in the store is, oh no, I lie. It's Red Dead Redemption 2, but you could also get pretty much all the games you're giving you for free. Uh, <laughs> well, if you get it. And plus, of course, shark cards. Fair enough. Yeah, no, as far as, so a quick thing, a uh, technical note. Uh, the lag, if anyone's seeing between both of us talking and uh, visual, if that's happening, uh, Discord's being a bitch. Sorry, this has yeah, been really fussy lately with that kind of stuff. Uh, and so anyway, sorry. Uh, I was going to get much. like uh, real quick. What could uh, recommended spec? Well, I was just going to say on Grand Theft. I'm sorry, Red Dead Redemption uh, uh, Two for PC. Mm-hmm. It's also coming to Stadia. They announced, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. It'll become Stadia. I think day and date. I, I thought might it be wrong said day of launch. Uh, for uh, Stadia. Which we don't actually launching. know exactly. What, uh, but anyways, um, I thought it said Wednesday's launching. It's going to be on there. Um, but yeah, I was it, just... it will uh, November uh, as a launch title for Google Stadia. So when yep, Stadia there. launches, yes. Yep. So uh, yeah, that's what I thought I read. Uh, as far as like PC goes, um, Justin and I have been going back and forth on if we would pick it on PC because we both want to do online. We enjoy PC. But uh, Ryan, uh, uh, Ryan first member of a team, he made a mm-hmm. comment on Twitter that stuck with me. That the last couple times he tried to play Grand Theft Auto Online, the the hackers and stuff were driving him insane. It, he clarified it wasn't just like the people who you know who were uh, doing ran you know like random things, getting unlimited money and stuff like that. It was the people who were literally clicking a button and setting every player in the server on fire and killing them. Yeah, uh, but they're putting people in cages and stuff like that. Rockstar has really never done much to address the hacking problem in Grand Theft Auto Online. How do we know they're what the, that that uh, Red Dead Online on uh, PC? Is well, not going to be the that, same shit. Not show. quite true. They they try, but they keep finding new ways. I mean, and there are options where you can make your own server with just your group. But if I remember right, Grand Theft Auto Five, people actually found ways to kill you if you're in a different server. Uh huh. But yeah, like, it's, it's supposed to be kind of dangerous. Have- a passive mode and stuff like that too. So yeah, you're. It's a worry. Well, passive mode didn't do anything for the particular issue that Ryan's talking about because literally people uh, – when we were doing one of our streams, uh, he literally got locked into an invisible cage of fire uh, and was just setting him on fire. And he straight up closed the whole game down. We switched to a different server and his he logged back in and his character logged in like that. Apparently, his he, he said like it took him like – a day or two to get back in the game. Like that became a permanent fixture literally of his character <laughs> in Grand Theft Auto Online. Like that's how badly broken it was from what I, from what I remember him saying to me. So that's, that's the worry and the issue. However, uh, as our buddy Pirate King pointed out, Red Dead Online on PC means RP servers, role-playing servers. Mm-hmm. And that Oof. sounds fun. That do- Especially because like all the stuff we're adding now and there's actually like classes like bounty hunter and stuff like uh-huh. that. 
There's oh, more. Man. There's more of a game with Red Dead Online, and then there, GTA Online was accumulate money, drive cars, do crazy shit. Red Dead Online seems like there's an actual game. There's actual stuff to do. Like, uh, uh huh. Sorry, I, I just saw a gift of someone just flipping guns and tore a light revolver off the line. I want to play it right now. Um, but so, as my yeah. long story short is, I probably will pick it up on PC and just talk myself out of replaying the game. Not that I ever finished it the first time. If I, yeah, cause- I. I might talk oh, myself hope. into finishing it on PS4 and just not playing it at all on PC. Yeah, I, I got friends that are playing right now. When I'm hearing like conversations, like, "Hey, man, you want to go get this butt challenge out of the way?" Like, they're just going together, hunting, getting that. It's like, oh man, there's a bounty that up sounds here. Sounds fun. Exactly. So, I, I mean, I'm going to get it regardless. I know we're debating where we're going to play it. Like if, that said, I'm down for playing it back on PS4 as well because my PS4 is back in my streaming area. Um. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I'm just I really want to get back into Red Dead. I God, I gotta finish Same. all these games, so I just can't. Uh, either Same. way, it's cool. It's cool. It's official. It's here. Uh, by the way, 150 gig install. Enjoy. Um, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for redlining my thing, but fuck. <laughs> uh, as far as like the demands for the game, not much different than Grand Theft Auto Five. I think uh, I seven. This is recommended at minimum. Uh, I seven forty seven seventy k um, AMD equivalents Ryzen five fifteen hundred uh, X memory twelve gigs of RAM uh, graphics card Nvidia GTX ten sixty at six gigabytes AMD Radeon RX four eighty at four gigabytes. Honestly, spec wise for performance not terrible. Um, no. but that hard drive space one hundred fifty gigs have fun. I feel bad for all y'all data caps that want that. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the final thing on our news list. Speaking about just silent drops coming from Sony, after silent drops from a, coming from Rockstar. Uh, I mean, it was just literally a Wired exclusive for this next thing. Exactly. Uh, a tweet to a link to a Wired exclusive detailing the PlayStation Five. Uh, oh, I say detailing, lightly detailing the PlayStation 5. Which, from what I'm reading about, I haven't been able to get all the details, but it seems like Sony uh, Interactive Entertainment, uh, Europe, and possibly, I think it was said Japan, had no idea that this was happening. That the wire really? was an exclusive. Uh, yeah, only, apparently, America, the American company made, side of Sony Interactive made Great. a choice. I, I think I think PlayStation actually is right now in the States, though. I might be wrong on that. It is. Currently, I believe, but the, the, so yeah, but the thing is, whole arms of Sony and Interactive Entertainment who are working on the PlayStation Five had no idea. Apparently, that's what I'm reading. Uh, a few different places talked about that uh, so, earlier today. But PlayStation curious, Five has been officially like, is, revealed. Is that a knee jerk reaction? It gets it, like leaks are happening, gets us out. But they, no, they gave a they gave Wired an exclusive detail. Uh, like yeah, a, this everything. wasn't a leak. This wasn't a leak. A knee jerk reaction to a leak. This was a planned thing that wasn't communicated within their team if assuming that is true yeah uh, uh, pretty much if you're wondering what the ps5 is it's kind of like what the ps4 is is a more of a pc than what a console used to be you're seeing more common parts related to more pc parts than you are uh to their like, exclusive you know cell processor uh they're still using teraflops that's not a thing i don't care what you say <laughs> <laughs> How floppy is your Terra? Oh, very floppy, sir. Uh, okay, so PS5. Yeah, I'm reading. I've read it over a few different times. The bi- the biggest takeaway from this whole thing is the new controller has haptic technology and adaptive triggers. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, ad- the adaptive triggers are actually bothering a lot of our friends who uh, do accessibility stuff because it seems like they're right now people are trying to find out are they is a disableable feature because people with uh, accessibility issues can't sometimes necessarily you know d- deal with that it's either yeah. it's essentially the triggers either in or out they can't like adapt you know the, you can't uh, do the precise movements and stuff like that so I, i'm curious about the accessibility of the stuff they haven't really said much of that but i mean the, the idea of the controller sounds interesting uh it's going to be backwards compatible i saw a bunch of people asking and no, it won't happen but is there a place to put my uh they said it's fully backwards compatible is there a place to put my vita Games. <laughs> a lot of people are asking. It's like, no, there's not. 
<laughs> How uh, dare you even put, question that? Other big thing is it's going to have an SSD. I can't find anywhere that claims the size of the SSD. No, and I can't I've imagine it it's yeah. not going to be larger than a terabyte. Which really, with how again uh, how big game installs are getting, a terabyte is not enough. Yeah, that is a think... that is a joke. Let me see a terabyte. Um, and then otherwise, um, I was just going to give you an idea of what it. Uh, really quick looking, uh, terabyte SSD runs over actually less than I thought, but uh, they uh, very 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 cheap ones about in the low hundreds. Uh, generally you'll see about one hundred thirty. Uh, that's mm. usually on sale. Uh, so they're not cheap um other than that it's kind oh. of a i forget how much ram it has like has a bunch of ram action and actually uh mm-hmm. but the game uh also is going to have a 4 clay uh blu-ray drive no reason why the pro didn't have that and <laughs> xbox one x did um but uh with that their uh game discs are going to be able to hold uh 100 terabyte for like uh physical media which is weird they're actually boasting that part since we're kind of like edge it on to that digital streaming side of things but that was the point sure. they made uh and it's going to be capable of ray tracing which i can tell you as a pc player uh depending exactly what it's doing for ray tracing that's demanding um if you want proof go play control and pc and turn on ray tracing see if you can run that game uh <laughs> good old ray trace good old ray trace no also uh the charge cable is going to use uh usb c Thank Happy God. about that. Please, God, let that battery last longer than 80 minutes. I don't that know if it's some of the advice, but the, like, PlayStation, my PlayStation 4 controllers just die. Mine aren't too bad. Uh, mine don't die that quickly, but I also don't use them probably as much as you do. So. Yeah. yeah, speaking uh, of which, I need new ones. I like. I was like, man, why am I getting dead zone? Like, by the way, I need definitely need one because I, I got the point where like I'm in a dead zone. Of, like, if I go to the top, the top left there, my character will walk. Stuff like that. And this one <laughs> I dropped in. There's something that keeps getting under the R1 that sometimes it works right, but other times it doesn't. So uh, then I realized how old they are, and they're as old as my first PlayStation Four, the my launch PlayStation Four. No, I lied. One of those came with the Pro. I mean, Did I- it. I've got this one. I've got these are my PS4 controllers. I got the anniversary one and the God of War one. I'm about to go get like the crystal one, which is god awful. Like, well, it's not that bad, but like I saw what on markup, like I'll mark down to like 41 bucks at Target or something like that. Hmm. Anyways, that's so, the point. I- the, I was to say the last thing on the PS5. I think last thing is that it's coming out holiday 2020, which is what we already assumed. Uh, uh, I'm really, since that cat is out of the bag officially now, and yeah, officially the PlayStation 5, I mean, that wasn't a stretch to guess what that would be, um, hopefully maybe it'll start talking about, oh, now here are the games we got, and I got, I, blah, announced PSX, <laughs> I love PSX, I want another one. That would be so lovely, fun. I would like to go to PSX so, after like, hearing you talk about it. Oh, focused it's just i can actually play things even though there's media so i can play them anyways but like if i sat in line i could realistically play something <sighs> it's just good like it's just a combination of people enjoying playstation also if you're a esports fan in the fighting game community they're also doing like street fighter tournament stuff in there too mm-hmm. um pretty cool stuff uh it was it was an awesome event there's something big that happened there. I can't remember. Whatever. <laughs> like a, a, a dumb <laughs> performance or something. Uh, I know DJ cut me. I was tearing up one of those rooms. That was awesome. That was awesome. JP says what I'm talking about. So, yes. Yeah, um, that, I believe, is our show for today. I think we actually got through everything before the hook came and pulled me out of the room, too. So, yeah. That, that, da, that, da, 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 da. Wom. Yeah, my body is uh, officially dead and mush now, and I also I want to get back to Gundam or something. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that is all yeah. today. Uh, so, where you, can you catch us? Of course, Twitter slash ConCalPod. Tells you all the stuff constantly calibrating's up to. We just launched, not launched, uh, released uh, episode 300 of the Constantly Calibrating Podcast. If you want to know who we are, where we started, where we came from, that is the one to view or listen to. 
It's a great show. It, it's definitely and um, what I after editing it, and listening back to it, uh, I was worried it wouldn't be accessible to people who watch the show currently, and it's actually totally accessible. The way we talk about things, it's not inside joke heavy or anything like that. It it it's definitely the history of us and uh, the individuals who have been showrunners on the show. Um, as far as content covering podcast goes, also episode three hundred one featuring the guys from Shot Call, which is a really cool company. Uh, some really and some really cool guys that comes out. Friday. I'm uh, putting out two episodes this week because 300 was supposed to go out last week, but it was a technical nightmare. <laughs> to yeah. Edit. By the way, uh, 299 was also a great show. Recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a lot of great shows recently. Wasn't that the one we're drunk on? No, 299 was with Khalif. 298 was Khalif the drunk was a great show. Com- Honestly, but 299. Everything- 298. Okay. Yeah, we've been putting out some bangers lately, dude. I think 295 onward has been pretty phenomenal of Constant Coloring Podcast. Everything since we've been back has been great, but 295 onward has been pretty yeah, much so if phenomenal. If you're somebody who's like just jumped, like this is your first experience of Constantly Calibrating, don't start at one. Start at 295. <laughs> just go on from there. And then make a decision if you want to go back and listen to any other shows. I will go ahead and make that decision for you. No. No, actually, yeah. kidding. We there's, do have great shows. Uh, there's good stuff in there. There's some great gems in there. Uh, so yeah, that happened. Uh, but it's good stuff. We're booming, baby. Go check us out. Uh, definitely like uh, leave us a review both on the catch all and constantly calibrating, especially on iTunes. Even if you don't listen there, it helps us so much with five star reviews. Mm-hmm. Helps discoverability. Helps us get into things. It helps us just be us. And that's what all you want. That's why you come here, right? Right, Josh? And absolutely. Look at you doing the whole outro, even though I didn't write you one yet. <laughs> I still need one, though. Like You did a good job get... without without the script, though. I'm very proud. Yeah, but eh, flatter me <laughs> later. I am Justin. You can find me at Justin underscore Glorious on the Twitter. Also, I do stream mixtures. Uh, Cobb slash Justin Glorious. Uh, there's Josh over there, my co-host. Bear Punch on Twitter at that Bear Punch. He's also Bear Punch everywhere else. Make sure just you name it. Just pretty much. <sighs> Bear Punch. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> oh, you're fine. I, <laughs> I am. I forgot if I updated my Blizzard account. It doesn't matter anymore. Uh, so that is all for the show. Uh, Razzle Dazzle Well, Will, until we catch you next time. It's been a genuine pleasure.